audio cue. <laughs> Yes. yes. Love it. Yes. Hey guys, just Jan here with Mike's camera. We got Mark here with Tamron. He's brought a couple new lenses to show us. Yes. What did you bring for us? So it's really cool. Mike's camera is the first public showing of two of our newest pieces here. Most recently announced was the 35 to 150 f2 to 2.8 VXD for Nikon Z native. This has been a game changer for the Sony system. It upended several genres of photography. We were on back order for a year and a half. It's been our most requested lens for the Nikon lineup and I'm really really glad to be able to show it to you natively on the camera without any adapters, all the good stuff. And because it's made in license and in collaboration with Nikon everything is native. What is supposed to be will be. As with all of our lenses it's completely weather sealed. We weather seal all of our lenses. Something we'll demonstrate a little bit later is the vast programmability of this lens especially for you videographers out there. The things you can do to control this lens's behavior either on site or before you shoot are pretty incredible. The fact that it's only a quarter turn from 35 to 150 allows for very quick and smooth zooming if you need to. This ring for focusing has an outstanding throw. The cool thing is you can program the throw and make it mechanical and have it act like a proper cinematic lens in the day. It's a phenomenal piece of glass. It goes on sale September 21st. Mike's camera just put in their order for them. They will have them. And as always, brick and mortar stores will have them before internet. So make sure that you shop for it locally. It's going to be $19.99. Now the other piece that was a surprise for me, because we just announced it as in development, we do not have pricing or availability yet for this guy, but it was really nice to have this show up yesterday too, is our 70 to 180 DI3 VC VXD G2. We do love our acronyms at Tamron. Just like this guy, it's completely weather sealed. If you guys know anything about the original 70 to 180, it was extremely popular because of its size and its weight. Its cost vector is extraordinary when considering it's a professional grade 2.8 lens but if there were any complaints about that lens it was that it lacked some features it was a pretty simple design the optics were fabulous the autofocus was fabulous but the exterior of the lens didn't have anything really going on now we've upgraded it completely this is an all-new lens new glass new array new coatings on the glass we finally have stabilization in this class of lens which is also fantastic and then all of the programmability that goes with our new intelligent optics line the smart glass here is going to be something else that the video will also enjoy. So keeping that in mind, I don't know when it's coming out yet. They just said fall of 2023. We all know fall can be any time until winter. That's how it works. Don't know pricing just yet. Come on by. It's going to be cool. Sweet. And what is this cord here for? So we have an interesting setup. So we talked about the programmability of our lenses. We have an app for laptops and PCs, uh, Mac and PC. It's called the Tamron Lens Utility. And we just recently came out with the Android version of that app. What it allows us to do is change the behaviors of the lenses as we work with them. I can choose a focus preset where I can tell the lens to always remember a specific distance away from me. I can choose two different spots. If I'm setting up an interview like I'm here with Jen, I can actually have the camera remember both of these positions and I can even set the rack speed between these two positions as we go. Just as before, we talked about how we can change from the nonlinear by wire mechanics of focusing, which is something that every videographer absolutely hates about mirrorless lenses is the fact that I can't consistently get focusing behavior when I'm manually focusing a mirrorless lens. Well, now I can actually go into the lens and program it to be specifically 90 degrees, 180, 270, or 360 degrees of throw every single time so your focus pulls will be consistent and on the spot every single time. I can do that through the laptop or through the, the Android app, and the USB-C cord is the answer. It goes straight into the lens, not just for firmware updates anymore and yes I know people get a little concerned this is the same weatherproofing as underwater cell phones so this is actually probably the safest part of the lens we would ask that you not submerge any lens I don't care who makes it but if you do happen to get wet weather sealing is great throughout but this is the safest part of the lens for that so don't worry about it so much but I can actually plug it in here turn on the camera and then plug on this plug it into the cell phone 
and I don't know how well you can see this, but the app is up on the phone automatically. And we can program it for focus pulls. We can actually program it to pace while we're blocking scenes. There's a lot of amazing things you can do here. You can even work as a two-man team, just like they do on set, where you've got a camera operator and someone on the phone programming the focus pulls as you discuss what's happening. So it's a pretty serious system for you cinematographers. In my opinion, it's not something we talk about enough because it's a little complex, but for you videographers, if you're tired of having all the big rigs, this is something that can save you a lot of time, space, and money down the road. It is currently Android only for the phone app, and we are looking towards iOS, but that may take some time, so give us a little bit on that. But this is something no one else has going. We are the vanguard for smart lenses, and these are two of the latest additions to the line. Pretty cool. That is pretty cool. So the cable here, does that come with the lenses? It does not. It's a very standard USB to USB-C or USB-C to C. I would say make sure it's one of the cables that does provide power. So if you have a super fast charging cable, those are really the best because they do provide a consistent communication table between the two, uh, between the phone and the lens. There are other cables that will work, but I don't find them to be as consistently capable. So make sure you're picky about your USB-C cables regardless. Even for your cell phone, that does make a difference for them. It will make a difference for these guys as well. And you mentioned this is probably good for our videographers. So these lenses, who else, like photographer-wise, might they be good for? So I, I, when I posted these two side by side, some folks were like, well, that's a lot of overlap. And it is, but it's there for two different people. If anything, the 35 to 150 here is finally the professional grade walk-around lens that everybody's been looking for. It's not the most convenient to do the size. It's a little over two pounds. So, you know, she's not the lightest weight of lenses, but underneath the hood, it's an f2 to 2.8 so you're either at 2.8 or brighter throughout the range of this lens and it has changed wedding photography and concert photography and theater work and anything involving low light photography or videography as it goes there are entire YouTube channels devoted to showing you that you can shoot an entire 14 hour wedding without ever having to change your lens I'm not saying that's the right way to necessarily do things but it's really cool that you don't necessarily have to carry a whole ton of glass anymore this is like having a stack of primes in your bag from 35 to 150. Anybody in the portrait world or street photography world or even the landscape world knows that's ridiculously versatile. We in fact we just announced another lens that I don't have here yet it's under development that's our 17 to 50 f4. I cannot imagine a better compatible lens with this thing the 17 to 50 plus 35 to 150 just enough overlap you're not even changing between those two lenses enough mm -hmm. with all the same programmability it's going to be sick. The 70 to 180 here is our baby G mask it, this is our top of the line 70 to 200 genre 2.8 lens, except it's in an F4 size body, F4 size weight. It has the macro capacity that was uh, hidden within the original version, but is now fully accessible automatically. You don't have to worry about it. And so for people who are looking for a sideline sports lens, as well as their portrait stuff, this is where this lens comes into play. I know that it sounds weird, but I also recommend both of these lenses for things like panoramic photography, because when you get out to the panoramic focal lengths of 85 to 150 or so the field is really flat your overlaps are beautiful and your panoramics come out looking flawless so either one of these will also suffice as a good landscape piece cool and this uh, 70 to 180 is for Sony only? Is for, that right? for Sony only for, for the time Currently? being. Yep, yep that, okay. that we know of. Yep. Awesome. Cool. Yeah. It's going to be fun. Honestly, with the three lenses that we've announced, you guys are going to have some exciting options, especially for Sony. This will be 17 lenses now wow. that we'll have for Sony out. This will be our second lens for Nikon Z. Thank you, Nikon, for letting us come to the party. We love you. And we also have the four lenses for Fuji X mount that are not on the table, but are still awesome, and you should check them out. I'm noticing here there's a lock on yes. the lens. No, that's probably not a new feature, right? That's it's, all on your all your lenses as well? It's on a lot of zoom lenses. The basic reason is because we want to lock the lens so that if it's being carried around like on a on a shoulder type strap or people pulling them out of their bag, I, I want to make sure that the zoom isn't being stripped out or creeping out while I'm walking around. Both of these lenses are heavily damped, so they won't have that problem for creep, but as lenses get older and as they work in, mechanically they'll probably have a little bit. So what this does is it just locks it at the wide angle point, 35 on this guy, the lock locks this at 70, and that way you just don't have the lens creep problem and you don't actually strip out your motors when you're pulling them in and out of your bags.
Hmm, cool. And how about the uh, black little button right there? What does that do? So the button here is uh, part of the customization of the lens. Both of these lenses have a custom switch, and the custom switch has three different positions. Go in through the Android app or through the PC and Mac component, and I can program this button to be three different things, or I can leave it alone entirely and program it from the camera like any other focus hold button on native lenses would have. It's not that these aren't native. I should, I should say they are 100% native. This is made in collaboration with our friends at SONY. This is made in our collaboration and license with Nikon. So everything is the way it should be, but uh, it, it will act uh, just like their normal lenses if you need to. Agreed. Yeah. Cool. Well, thank you so much for showing us. This You're welcome. Stuff. Mark, oh, man, thanks for I'm coming in. Glad to be here. Glad you guys are the first. Come on down to Mike's camera. If you need to do pre-orders, they're taking pre-orders, at least on the Z lens. And again, we'll be first before the internet. So deal.